Iron Maiden's next album with Blaze, and actually their last album with Blaze, was released on March 23rd, 1998, and it was called Virtual X. However, this album was not much better, and it's probably worse, which the charts were the lowest to date, and they have failed to sell 1 million copies worldwide, and they only peaked at number 16 in the UK. This album also see, received about the same reviews negative throughout and only peaked at the US Billboard at 124. And their only memorable song in that entire album was the first song on on the list on the on the list called Future Real, which was which was a pretty good song. And it looked like that the band was already at its peak that ended in the 1980s, as with their previous three albums we're not getting much success. Basically what I'm saying is that the 90s were, the, were their lowest point and that this was their last album that was released in the 90s but I think the whole band was glad that the 90s were coming to an end. By January of 1999 Bayes Blaley was asked to leave the band during a meeting and then Janik Juris claimed that the band was was partly their fault Due to him forcing, due to them forcing him to perform songs that were beyond his natural register. Then, uh, then about a month later, they needed to find a replacement for Blaze Bailey, and uh, Rod Smallwood convinced uh, Steve Harris to put Bruce Dickinson back in the band. The band entered talks with Bruce Dickinson, and then finally he agreed to rejoin the band in late January of 1999. And, and also a few hours later, uh, ex, uh, guitarist Adrian Smith uh, this, uh, decided to rejoin the band as well. And also with uh, Janik Jurist, uh, the great thing is that he stayed with the band and now with Iron Maiden have three guitars in their band lineup. Also later in 1999, Nico McBrain had a change in his life that he converted to Christianity after an experience with a Spanish River Church uh, in Florida, after his wife Rebecca had been asking him to attend with her, they also she claimed that he found Mc, uh, Nico crying and experienced a calling, recounting that he said, "I sat there thinking, I didn't drink last night. Why can't I stand? I had this love affair with Jesus going into my heart." Next year, a new millennium and a new decade has started, and with, as a result, they released their new album on May 29th of 2000 called Brave New World, which they, which they had more progressive and melodic sound for a modern audience, with also with a keyboard orchestration. This album also brought critical acclaim and brought the band back to its glory years peaked at number 7 at UK's Billboard charts and receiving a gold vertification in several countries. The band was finally back on top in commercial success. Following the end of their world tour of Brave New World in March of 2002, they once again took another break before coming back in late 2003 with their 13th studio album. In September 8th of that year, they released the album that was called Dance of Death, once again having critical acclaim and also a commercial success like, like Brave New World. And also many critics claim that the release matched up to their earlier efforts such as Killers, Peace of Mind, and Number of the Beast. And of course with this album they had historical and literacy references were present. And in this album, they, the UK peaked at number 2, and in the US it peaked at number 18, with selling over 100,000 copies in the United Kingdom alone. 
Following the end of their Dance of Death tour on February 8th of 2004, a year later, in, in 2005, they came up with another tour called the Eddie Rips Up that ran from May 28th of 2005 to August 31st of 2005. Um, they had 45 shows, but what the interesting thing about this concert was, uh, there was a there was one concert where Ozzy Osbourne's wife Sharon took offense, and uh, they he they placed they placed her family friends in the crowd and sabotaged their performance by throwing eggs, bottle tops, and uh, lighters in front of the audience. Um, they also they also the PA system was cut off. And the microphone uh, was uh, also with, with the microphone being cut off, and then also sometimes their their power was cut off. Uh, but however, um, the band reportedly played even better as their performance was disrupted. So uh, it wasn't entirely bad, but she has a bad relationship with Bruce Dickinson. By 2006, with already 13 albums released. Uh, Iron Maiden never peaked in the top 10 in the United States until this album that was released on August 28th of 2006. That album was called The Matter of Life and Death. Matter of Life and Death basically took another turn with, ex with its lyrics and basically a lot of their songs were about war and religion as well as their cover artwork. With, which has a uh, which has war in it. The album once again received great critical acclaim um, with all, with most of their songs, and once again it re it re received over 100,000 copies in the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, it peaked at number four in the charts, as well with uh, some great songs like "Different World" for the Great of Good of God. Uh, the recrimination of Benjamin Bree, and of course also the Pilgrim. <laughs> um, yeah, this album was a really good album. It was one, it's one of their more successful albums in their later years. Yeah, just a great album. <laughs> Following the Matter of Life and Death album, the band decided to take a break from songwriting and uh, created new albums and decided to go through a couple world tours like the Somewhere Back in Time world tour and Flight 666. In 2007 they started their, their Somewhere Back in Time world tour. It started in February 1st of 2008 and it lasted until April 2nd of 2009. It was basically a way of bringing back the 1980s stage show and forgotten classics for an audience of younger fans. And then they released a documentary called Iron Maiden Flight 666 that follows the band's first leg of their Somewhere in Time tour. It was released on uh, April 21st of 2009. The Somewhere Back in Time World Tour was a very successful tour which had an attendance with all concerts with 2 million people. As a new decade started to begin, so of so is with songwriting and uh, releasing a new album. In August 13th of 2010, they released their 15th studio album called The Final Frontier. Once again, garnered critical acclaim and basically with great commercial success, reaching number one in 28 countries worldwide. Following the Final Frontier album that ended on August 8th of 2011, they uh, went to another tour called the Made in England World Tour that began on June 21st of 2012. Uh, this tour was like kind of like the Somewhere Back in Time tour in the late 2000s. It was basically uh, the band's 1980s uh, material, basically the show to a younger audience. And it was the main focus was the 1988 album of the Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Like Somewhere Back in Time, this this tour was also a great success with performing 100 shows from June 21st, 2012 to July 5th of 2014. Several months after the uh, Maiden of England tour in early 2015, Bruce Dickinson went several weeks of chemotherapy and radiation therapy for tumors that were found in the back of his tongue. However, May 15th of that year, he was given an all-clear by his specialist. Uh, 
And by later in that year, in September 4th of 2015, they released their 16th and final album today called The Book of Souls. The Book of Souls was once again still, they are still in critical acclaim for their new stuff. And uh, the great thing is about this album, it was their first album where they peaked into the top five on the chart. In the U.S. Billboard, they peaked at number four, while peaking at number one in uh, tons of other countries, and receiving a platinum, and uh, and also with us a few countries as well. This album was a great was also a great success, as well as their world tour in support of that album, which started in February 24th of 2016 and ended July 22nd of 2017. Still to this day is a very successful tour, having many sellout concerts during the tour. Following the Books of, of Souls tour, they uh, they are currently on a they are currently on a new tour called Legacy of the Beast World Tour that began on May 26th of 2018 and is still ongoing. And, but they have announced that it was, was going to end on October 15th of 2019. Basically, it was a it was a history hits tour once again. Uh, as as of today, they are still successful, and they are still performing the concerts really well, even though all the people in the band are in their early 60s. So um, that's Iron Maiden, people, and throughout their throughout their time, they were nominated for 39 awards, and awards they've won, they've won 29 total awards so um with iron maiden i highly recommend them if you're a heavy metal fan then you'll definitely love how iron maiden is they're very cool they have a great style they're uh they have a lot of great songs throughout their time especially during their 80s time it's a great band to check out they are still active today and you can still go to one of their concerts so yeah i give iron man an A plus on their performance. Thank you guys. Uh, that's all I have for you. And if you please hit that subscribe button if you want to do more music history. Anyways, guys, I'm Start McCleary. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the new series. Peace.